and welcome to Neeti Manthan's Center for Environmental Law Research and Actions Project. I'm Krithima Devakar, currently working as an intern with the organization. And this particular video deals with precautionary principle. So to start with the background of precautionary principle, it basically has its roots in the late 1960s. In the mid-1970s, uh, West Germany's legislature enacted a national environmental policy which provided for a precautionary approach to environmental protection. The policy was termed as Warsaw's Principle, which literally meant foresight principle. The precautionary principle is thus con considered to be the most important principle of German environmental policy. However, it was internationally acknowledged in the early 1980s when environmental degradation became a matter of concern for the international community. It was first acknowledged formally in the preamble to the Vienna Convention for the Protection of the Ozone Layer. It was suggested that precautionary measures be taken at international and national levels to protect the ozone layer. The year of 1992 is uh, marked as very important for development of the principle. There was a convergence of the precautionary principle and the climate change issue in international law. The precautionary principle was acknowledged on an international level when the UNF, uh, UN, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change was adopted. Now to further understand the concept of precautionary principle, that what is precautionary principle? Uh, in simple terms, the precautionary principle conveys the common sense based advice to err on the side of caution. It is one of the most popular legal approaches in the field of environmental law. Precautionary principle favors monitoring, in preventing and mitigating the uncertain potential threats to the environment with regard to certain activities which are potential to harm the environment. Now to elaborate it further, we need to understand the dichotomy of tra uh, traditional and precautionary approach. Traditional regulatory practices are reactive in nature uh, in terms of threats and harm to the environment, whereas precautionary measures are preventive and preemptive. It is the precautionary principles are basically a better safe than sorry approach in contrast with the traditional reactive wait and see approach to environmental protection. Now moving further, there are two widely accepted definitions of the principle. The first one was uh, given in the Rio Declaration of 1992 in which they talked about that in order to protect the environment, the precautionary approach shall be widely applied by states according to their capabilities. So concisely talking about precautionary principle, they said that where there are threats of serious or irreversible damage, lack of full scientific certainty shall not be used as a reason for postponing cost effective measures to prevent environmental degradation. Now, the second most, uh, second widely accepted definition of precautionary principle is being given in the 1998 wing spread statement on the precautionary principle. Uh, it was said that when an activity raises threats of harm to human health or environment, precautionary measures should be taken even if some cause and effect relationships are not fully established scientifically. The process of applying the precautionary principle must be open, informed and democratic and must include potentially affected parties. It must also involve an examination of the full range of alternatives including no action. In this context, the proponent of an activity rather than public should bear the burden of proof. The precautionary principle according to this particular statement shifts the burden of proof or, uh, to the proponents of the activity. That is, the proponents have to establish the fact that the proposed activity will not in fact cause any harm to the environment or any human being. 
now talking about the status of the principle in india the principle was firstly invoked in the velour citizens welfare forum versus union of india case which is commonly called as the tamil nadu tenneries case uh in this case a very comprehensive interpretation and application of precautionary principle was done by the court the court said that the state uh, the court ordered that the state authorities were directed to anticipate and prevent attack of causes of environmental law degradation and the burden of proof uh, was shifted on the industrialist and develop or developer to prove it that it is not harmful now gradually it has become a very essential part of the environmental jurisprudence throughout the country now summing up with a very brief critical analysis of the principle certain environmentalists and environmental theorists say uh, with reference to the implementation of the principle in the uh, in the current scenario uh, they uh, they have pointed out that the precautionary principle is not very well defined single idea it makes more sense to describe it as a cluster of vaguely related intuitions about risk aversion burden of proof irreversible damage and normative obligations it is a concept which is basically incorporated in various modified senses by various agencies and institutions um also uh, one of the main contention of precautionary principle is to shift the burden of proof on the developer to prove whether the certain development or certain activity is causing any potential harm to the environment or not but this approach uh, for this contention is rather questionable and arguable as the burden of proof rest with anyone who makes a claim regardless of what is being claimed so this was all about the precautionary principle from my side thank you for watching the video we hope you like it